stream status. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> wow. Hey everybody, Steve Tartar and uh, another edition of Tartar Sauce. With me today, Ashley Thomas, no stranger to Peoria Life. Uh, you are the host S, host, host S, of Cook With Me. And how long TV. have you been? TV. Yeah. <laughs> Sad that part. It's not on radio, folks. It's on TV. Um, how long have you been doing that? I know, but. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I started it last January, so a little over a year, year and a half now. And you are no stranger to this format where let's explain this for the folks that haven't seen it you take about how long How's 30 30 to 45 30 minutes to 40 minutes or whatever it takes to do and you actually prepare a meal mm -hmm. and people can do it right along with you yep okay exactly. uh where'd you get that idea Ooh, that's a great question. <laughs> Actually, it was my husband's idea. Right. So I don't know if anybody... Let's give him credit. Yeah, we have to give him credit. Um, I don't know if anybody's familiar with Twitch. It's a gaming platform. Right. Um, it's very popular, and essentially people can go on there and watch somebody stream themselves playing video games for like 10 plus hours at a time. Let me guess, there's like millions of people watching. This, there are. You know? Yep. It's hugely popular. Um, mm -hmm. And so my husband was like, you know, if... People are interested enough to watch somebody play a video game. Surely they're interested enough to learn how to improve their health in the kitchen. You would think. You would think. <laughs> <laughs> you would think. So that's kind of where the idea was born. So uh -huh. we essentially started off with this idea of creating something called Twitch for Dietitians. Twitch. Okay. Um, don't switch, just Twitch. Or something. We'll have to work on the theme. Uh, but now you have been interested. You are a dietitian by trade. And explain what that is. A dietitian, because somebody might think, well... You know, I think I know what a dietitian is. How do you? Yeah. How do you, how do you describe it? I think people use the terms um, registered dietitian and nutritionist interchangeably. Mm -hmm. um, basically, a registered dietitian has gone to school for at least four years um, in an accredited dietetics program and earned their bachelor's degree in that. Um, they've also done a 1,200-hour supervised internship and then sat for wow. a national board exam. 1,200 hours of internship. So mm -hmm. what were you doing in those 1,200 hours? So we rotate throughout all different areas of nutrition, oh. um, the main one being clinical nutrition. So we'll work in hospitals in both the inpatient and outpatient realm. Um, we'll do work in the community, um, research, um, academia, like teaching at the college level, um, working at a food bank, really dietitians can work in Across so many board. different areas. Yeah. Um, you know, you're bringing up a lot of things here because I'm thinking, okay, people need to be healthy. Uh, people can prepare their own foods. They, uh, do you find it, what would you say? Is it easy to cook? Well, for me, yes. <laughs> Cause I've been doing it for a <laughs> while. Go. Okay. That, <laughs> we got that worked out. Uh, so how do you get across that barrier? Yeah. Uh, somebody thinking, I can't. It's like asking somebody, can you draw? Oh, I can't draw. Well, right. Every kid knows how to draw. Yeah, I can't draw. I well, say you that, can't yeah. draw. There we go. <laughs> but, but now the same thing goes with cooking. You, right. You, why don't you make something? Oh, I, I, I don't cook. You know, hands mm -hmm. go up. Well, how do you go past that? Yeah. And I, it's not like I always knew how to cook either. When I was in college, I didn't really know how to cook that well. Mm -hmm. I found myself watching Food Network a lot, mm -hmm. which is really what helped me gain the skills and the confidence to actually go in the kitchen and try some recipes out. Mm -hmm. So for people who feel like they don't know how to cook, I encourage them to just, just try. Just start somewhere. It might be a disaster, and <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. Fa failure is good if you learn failure from it. Failure is good. Yeah. Um, so what was like, you know, when obviously you're dealing with, uh, for folks who don't know, uh, give us the schedule. You do a, a live shoot when? Every yeah. Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Central. And when, where do we watch this? You can watch this on our Facebook page, which is Cook With Me TV. And if you want the back shows, you go to Peoria Life. And yes. they've got the, mm -hmm. the backlog, so you can catch up on, on your past hits. Yep. Um, those things you pulled out. Oh, well, anyway, don't look at this. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> no, you probably have done very well. Um, so what would you say are the first things that you kind of learned how to cook? Ooh, um, pasta. Pasta. <laughs> Basic boiling now, water. Now, you are telling me that you come from Italian background? Uh-huh. Some in your my, family? My, mom, my mom's side of the family mom's is Italian. Them. So mm -hmm. this, this comes naturally. It does, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I grew up eating lots of pasta. Uh, and, and, that's, and that's sort of engaging because most people like pasta yeah. dishes. I mean, they're mm -hmm. hugely popular mm -hmm. in many forms. Uh, kids like it. Ooh, so yeah. it's it's like a nice thing that the whole family can enjoy. Right. Mm -hmm. um, what what do you find are the hardest things to get people to like? 
Is it broccoli? Is it cauliflower? I mean, is it that stuff? Vegetables. Vegetables. Yep, vegetables. And I find that a lot of people are turned off by vegetables, and so they don't ever really try to cook them again. And I think a lot of it has to do with the way that they were prepared the first time they tasted them. So, like, if you had, no offense to anyone, mm -hmm. mom or grandma's overcooked broccoli, which is it's olive like, green and mushy and, yeah, yeah. and bitter and it doesn't have much flavor, you're not going to think that you like broccoli. Right. But it's a little bit different if you steam it or if you roast it with some olive oil, salt and pepper and rosemary. It tastes completely mm -hmm. different. And, of course, the other thing is now we're hearing more about this farm to table because mm -hmm. that's another element that you work with, trying to get fresh ingredients locally, grown yeah. ingredients, yeah. and that's coming up. Absolutely. And I think it's really big here in Peoria, too. I've noticed since I've gotten to know some of the local farms around here and just visiting the farmer's markets. I mean, food that's grown closer to home is going to be more nutritious. You know, it mm -hmm. hasn't traveled as far, which we know that when things are put on trucks and traveled for long periods of time, the nutrition content diminishes oh. over time. So the faster or the closer to harvest time that you can eat that food, the more nutrition is going to be in it. So uh, more, and I think we, we talked about this at an earlier day too, um, farmer's market is, mm -hmm. you highly recommend that. Oh, yeah. 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 Because there's your, there's your local food, there it is fresh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you can see kind of something there. When you go to the farmer's market, are you thinking of recipes or, well, I like this, I like that? I mean, how do you work that? I mean, because obviously you're thinking about future shows. Right. Or mm -hmm. I do think about what I'm going to need for Wednesday. Right. So, because every Wednesday, there's always I do Wednesday. The, there's always Wednesday. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot of the time, I'll just go and kind of pick what looks good or maybe something that I've never seen before or cooked before. What would that be? Something you've never <clears> seen before? <throat> so, they're actually garlic scapes with something that I had never cooked with before. And I saw them a lot. They look like, um, they kind of look like scallions, but they're, they kind of curl like oh. this and they're packaged in a little bundle. Oh. Have you seen them? No. And it's basically just... I'll look for them, but good. I haven't seen them. It's the green part that grows off of garlic. So if you ever leave your garlic bulb kind of sitting in the oh. tray and you see that little green sprout come out, if you let it grow, that's the garlic scape. Oh. And it tastes like a mixture of garlic and onions. Wow. It's really nice. I'll see, see what you're already learning uh, on this show uh, or, or really from Ashley because <clears throat> her show is where you're going to get the food uh, sort of know-how. Um, it seems to me that, you know, one of the things that... that uh, we struggle with in, is access to food. I mean, we hear, talk about food deserts, mm -hmm. um, and IPR is no different <clears throat> than many other places, I'm sure, where the segments of the community don't have access, uh, as much, at least as good access as other parts. Um, how do you, know, do you, do you address that? As a, this would be more as a dietitian, I would suppose, because you're headquartered with the Romains right mm -hmm. there. Yeah. You, give us, where, where is that? Yeah, so um, also aside from Cook With Me TV, my main job is uh, private practice that I have. Mm -hmm. um, and so I meet with individuals one-on-one -on -one and work with them on, on their nutrition. Right. Um, and I'm housed in the Greeley School, which is an old middle school building on Jefferson Street. Soon to be a, or is already an arts center. Yeah, yeah, exactly, a community arts center. Mm -hmm. So they've already run their first kids camp um, in July, which was a very big success. Great. They have lots of kids in there kind of rotating throughout different um, areas of the arts and experience, experiencing that. Um, but to answer your question about, you know, having access to food, I don't see a whole lot of people right now where that's a problem. Um, I do accept insurance, and I think maybe the more that I'm around and the more exposure that I have and the more that people learn about me, because I do accept insurance, so mm -hmm. hopefully I will get more of those individuals that are So if somebody through. comes in to see you or you see them, you you what you ask them, hey, so so give me an idea of what you eat. I mean, you you need to know mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. their nutrition or their what they're, what they're putting in their in their bodies. Right. So I do a full assessment, which entails yes, yeah, seeing um, what they eat on a regular basis. But then I also look at things like lab work, if they've got any lab work recently, mm -hmm. any medications that they're taking, um, any past medical history. So do they have diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol? Really, a full assessment of what's going on with you and kind of what your full nutrition story is. Mm. And then from there we create some goals for you to work on over the coming weeks to really help and improve your health in the long term. Do you do much with kids? I haven't. I just haven't had many people come to me right. for I that. Was, the reason I bring that up is because I'm thinking, and again, I don't know this. I haven't seen any research or anything on this, but just thinking out loud. Um, kids are kind of, you know, the, the, the happy meal, not to, mm. you know, 
pick on one one company or something, but but the Happy Meal concept where they're they're kind of force fed certain things mm -hmm. and everything is is sweet and uh, salty sugary, and yeah, fatty. salty. Yeah. I mean, how do you? I mean, how do you break free? Because you know, you mentioned about people adverse being adverse to vegetables. I'm thinking that's a lot of kids. Yeah. Because either the, the parents aren't eating them in front of right. them, and now so they they I, I just want. You know, whatever it is, a hot dog. And for a lot of families, it's easy and convenient. And they don't, you know, a lot of times families, parents are working maybe two jobs. Mm -hmm. And so they don't really have time to go to the grocery store and cook and, and you know, make right. a healthy meal on a regular basis. So stopping by, getting some fast food is is easy for them. Um, I think, you know, a place to start is kind of what you're alluding to is that the parents do model that behavior. So mm -hmm. the more that parents can eat those healthy foods, then the more their children are going to see that. I know because we, we talked before um, about, you know, kind of how you kind of do your thing on, on the, on the TV. Um, there, there's, it, it strikes me that there is a uh, excuse that people have. Um, well, I can't cook. I don't have time to mm. cook, you know, because of just what you said. I just got home from work. I'm tired. I'm not going to go sit and stand in the kitchen and then, you know, get all hot. And, yeah. uh, you know, you can Dick you can make this thing a terrible sort of scenario. Right. But it's not really that bad, is it? Because you don't necessarily need to spend an hour in preparation. Right. You, mm -hmm. That's your whole point. Yeah, I like that. I like that you brought that up, and I think last time we talked, we mm -hmm. talked about that, because I think that cooking can be like anything in your life. You have to prioritize something if you truly value it, and if you truly want to live your life in that way. You know, if you want to be healthy, figure out how you can make time to cook, even if it's just one or two meals a week. You know, mm -hmm. got to start somewhere. It doesn't have to be a full fledged seven nights a week. You're cooking a healthy meal from scratch. You know, just start small, start somewhere, but make make it a priority and make time for it. Well, I know, and you know, and I'm, I'm not, I, I cook myself, so I'm, I'm speaking from ignorance here, but uh, I, I, I've sort of realized the desire to do that. Like I want, I'll look <laughs> in a magazine and see something that looks so wonderful and I think, yeah, I, I like to make that. A, I'd like to eat it, but B, I think if I could bring that to somebody and say, hey, look what I did, I'm figuring, hey, I'm going to get all kinds of credit for this, you know, or like people looking at you astounded, you do this, you know, uh, there's all kinds of benefits there. But it's like, we are so surrounded with information. I mean, we know that because of, of the technology that we accept now pretty readily. But when it comes to cooking, you can't say that you aren't going to get some help somewhere. You've got unlimited recipes online. For free. Every mm -hmm. magazine comes with, you know, you know I say every magazine, uh, I don't know, the New Yorker has a lot of recipes in it, but a lot of the, the magazines that, that float through our house, they're cookies and cake and vegetables and salads. Um, now, what are you making this? We should tell people because oh, you know, yeah. now we've got everyone hungry here. So what, what's on the uh, Cook With Me TV uh, menu to, for tomorrow? Yes, on the menu tomorrow is a, it's a nice salad with some peanut roasted tempeh and mango. And so it's, explain what tempeh is because you had to explain okay. it to me. Yep, so tempeh is a soy product. If you think of tofu, it's kind of like tofu's cousin. It's slightly healthier than tofu though because it's been fermented. So mm. there's lots of healthy um, probiotics in it which are good for our gut. Oh. Um, so, and it kind of resembles, um, you can do a lot of things with it. It resembles ground meat if you kind of crumble it up. So you can kind of put that in place of ground meat if you're making like tacos or stuffed peppers oh. or some kind of casserole or whatever it is that you're so, making. And where do you find this tempeh? <clears throat> um, I have found it at Kroger, uh, hy V. Oh, so all over. I mean, over. I, I, mm -hmm. you mentioned a couple of big stores. Mm -hmm. so I haven't seen it at Aldi's, but okay. I, and it's usually in the produce section next to the tofu. You know, this we're off topic here, but such is life. Um, all these, uh, you know, got to give them credit uh, because sometimes you get uh, sort of pigeonholed as, oh yeah, no, it's just uh, you know, sort of uh, cheap, small, uh, cheap merchandise. <laughs> They're very, really good. The only problem I found with all these is if you just run in for something, you know, one or two items, you oh. And then you come to the front, and it's like backed up. There's like two oh. two people mm -hmm. working feverishly, and everyone in front of you has a huge cart mm -hmm. full of food. That's the only problem. They don't really have that quick aisle, uh, which the other two places do. Mm -hmm. So you work on that, all these, and uh, you get back to us. <laughs> uh, they're probably saying, you know, Steve, we're doing fine without your yeah. help. <laughs> so anyway, um, now you mentioned um, watching TV, uh, the the Food Food Network. Mm -hmm. 
The Food Network, by the way, has a pretty nice magazine. Um, they do, we, yeah. We, we, I don't know who got it at our house. It comes oh. in there. I think sometimes magazines just arrive once you start getting one or two others. But um, who do you like on there now? Oh, you know. gosh. Well, I don't really watch it anymore. Oh, you don't watch it? Oh, no. I you I moved know. away from I, it. I have moved away from She's it. She's got her own, <laughs> see? She I don't watch a whole lot of TV. not guys anymore. <laughs> well, when I did watch it, I really loved Giada De Laurentiis. I don't know if she's mm. still on there. I don't she know. She probably is. She's like the Italian. Well, and yeah. And, and one and of I, them, at least. And I know she's kind of, <laughs> some of them ascend, you know, they become, yeah. start selling hotware and, and uh, yep. become internet I- icons. Right. Um, yeah, the the one that, that you have probably seen, and and my son watches it more than me, but I will watch it when it's on. Is that diners, dives, and uh, with the drive-ins? Yeah, drive-ins, mm-hmm. because that's always fascinating. First of all, there's never been anything he doesn't like. Yeah, you know, the guy, with the white hair guy, um, which is fine because you know you you want to you know give people credit, but I'm always looking at that. He goes into the kitchen and they, they show the how they make it. Of course, mm-hmm. it's sped up, so right. you know you don't ever just sit there for two hours. But I'm always thinking, <clears throat> where, where, where are places like this? And of course, we have yeah. some here in Peoria. But, um, you know, they, they, some of these are just amazing. Milwaukee or, you know, these towns they go to and they have these. One yeah. Of, have you run into that? Have you run into some places where you, because you, you're from. Originally from Florida. Originally from Florida. Then you were in South Carolina. Charleston, South Charleston, Carolina. South, mm-hmm. And now I come here. Um, so in those travels, uh, have you come across some, some pretty interesting places? Oh gosh. Yeah. Well, yes. You're, you're more Charleston. into this. Prepare it yourself. I don't know if yeah. you like the restaurant concept. I do. Well, I grew up kind of during the time that I was watching a lot of Food Network. I loved eating out at restaurants. It was oh, just okay. kind of like one of my hobbies. Well, yeah. <laughs> so you're, you're picking up notes probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And experiencing new flavors. Um, there's some there's some really great restaurants in Charleston, South I Carolina. Bet. It's known for having good well, food and good hospitality. Well, huge visitors. A number of visitors mm-hmm. go through there. Lots of great seafood. Yeah. Um, I do remember I stopped at a place in Asheville called Tupelo Honey, mm. which had a really delicious fried chicken biscuit. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> really, really good. So Not I the healthiest that thing, if you're but back, you know, <laughs> back there in Asheville. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, the the whole food thing it, it strikes <laughs> me that now there's so much attention to being healthy. Eating the right foods. Uh, now, not everyone's paying attention to that because, obviously, as you said, fast food is, is, you know, we live in a convenience world. I thought it was interesting that McDonald's, that initially went with, uh, and I'm, I'm not picking on McDonald's, they're just the big one. They initially went with this fresh beef thing and because the yeah. others would, <clears throat> then they had to kind of back off that because it was taking too long. Mm. The, their oh. line, the, the drive-in line was like, they measure it to, to the second. And I think the franchisees around the country were complaining, you know, we can't get this stuff fast enough to Uh-oh. the people in their cars. The but, you know, got to go, got to go. So they back off that. And what do you know? The next quarter, boom, profits are up. So mm-hmm. convenience still wins out. It does. Uh, you know, in our world. Um, and, and here you are flying against that. Yeah. The, the wind is in your hair as you move towards saying, get, go, go, go ahead and get in the kitchen and right. uh, enjoy yourself. Uh, give us a tip or two because we're, we're, we're only short on time here. What does somebody want to do that said, okay, Ashley, I'm going to give it a shot. Mm-hmm. What, what, you know, you, you say pick out anything or should they go for what they like or how do you get, how do you yeah. poke someone into the kitchen that hasn't been there? Yeah. I think, I think it's good to start with a recipe that you find appealing. So mm-hmm. if the, if the mango peanut tempeh salad does not sound appealing to you tonight, then maybe don't try that one. Maybe look out for a future episode where it does sound appealing or, you know, you can always, you can, you can shift your perspective with anything in life. So I think that, you know, maybe this salad doesn't sound very good to you, but maybe you give it a try anyway and you might surprise yourself. You might actually really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the humps that we have to learn to get over is the way that we view healthy food. I think a lot of us think that healthy food can't possibly taste very good. Um, And it's probably a result of past experiences. Having Mm -hmm. something that you were told was healthy didn't taste good. So now you think that other things that are healthy are just not going to taste good. But promise you if you do it in a in the right way healthy food can taste very good there's a promise okay ashley yeah well uh we're almost out of time so we'll remind folks again uh catch you live at 6 30 yep. tomorrow mm-hmm. uh facebook and it's cook with me tv with ashley thomas and uh if you want to go back and look at past shows mm-hmm. maybe see uh, uh 
Uh, what have I missed? Uh, yeah. Go right here to the Peoria Life Network yeah. and you've got it. So thank you so much. Yeah, for, thanks for having me, Steve. And uh, now I'm hungry. I'm ready to go. All so, right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you next time. PeoriaLife.com.